Hi, welcome to Perhoi Interviews. My name is Julia Toma. I am a professional pianist and rehab doctor. The topic of today's interview with Professor Jörn Ranhold is fallacies of musicians. Professor Jörn Ranhold is a consultant to international athletes and performing artists from Europe, America and Asia. He has more than 25 years of experience working with and preparing world-class elite athletes for the Olympics, World and European Championships. Professor Jörn Ranhult is teaching psychology of peak performance and he is mental performance consulting at the Royal Danish Ballet, the Royal Danish Academy of Music and the Royal Danish Theatre. He has also been teaching performance psychology at the Danish National School of Performing Arts and the Rhythmic Music Conservatory. Welcome today to our interview. I'm very happy and honored to be here with you today. Well, thank you for having me. What is your perspective, Professor Jaranholt, about a healthy musician? How a healthy musician should be? Um, well, I think the most important part is to remember why they they play music. Mm -hmm. uh, quite often it started with curiosity and enjoyment. And then what happens uh, along the road is that uh, they're told how far they can go as this uh, talent. And all of a sudden they're caught in the curse of being a talent. Uh, so they begin to play to achieve these uh, external goals. And in the process, it's, it's bad <laughs> to be. It, it is in the process if they forget to enjoy and if they forget the enjoyment and only to fulfill the demands of say a, a professor or a teacher uh, and that's so they try to please uh, the teacher and and then of course it's not uh, wrong to try to improve and do what the teacher is saying but if if trying to meet those standards create more anxiety than then and and losing the perspective of enjoyment and curiosity mm -hmm. then it's a it's a high price to pay yes yes that's true you mentioned a word anxiety is anxiety the most common problems you found you encountered in musicians you worked until now um, I would say bef before that, I would actually say the culture in the music uh, okay. world is, is perhaps the most common because the culture is about practice, practice, practice. And then if you uh, do not reach your outcome, you feel bad, so you must practice more. And that's kind of the, the, the old culture. Um, I do not disagree with practicing. That's important, but uh, we have to help the, the student feel good about the effort and then look into if they could sometimes practice in a smarter way. And as, as they practice, then deal with anxiety uh, that, that comes about, which is quite normal when you want to, to perform your best and when it's really important to you. Um, the, 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 the demands of being on stage, yes, there will be anxiety. So it's about dealing with that. But if you haven't practiced in the studio dealing with, with the, why you play and, and go from there with enjoyment and curiosity, that being your values, for example, yes. then typically what comes about is anxiety because it's about meeting all these high standards that a lot of people have set for you. And then in the long run, you have internalized those high demands at the expense of, again, curiosity and enjoyment. Yes, you mentioned something very important, values. And I think uh, many artists or perform 
performers, they are not thinking like they should find or they should know what are their values. Maybe they are thinking, okay, I should uh, get to more competition. I should uh, know more repertoire. Um, so there, are, you hint to another perspective and another um, ideas and uh, things that maybe are not so um, aware in a musician's mm -hmm. mind at the moment. Yeah. In the musicians you worked until now, because you has you have really a huge experience. What are the irrational thoughts, attitudes, fallacies that you have encountered in musicians until now? Um, well, most likely the most often it's about the perfectionism, uh, but quite often also about the uh what do other people think uh and the, the 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 scare of disappointing others important others that could be either uh, family but especially the the teachers uh they're afraid to disappoint okay. and uh so again this is an example where they forget why they play it's not to 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 please the, the teacher per se but the teacher is just an assistant in, in reaching your, your goal and not hmm, the end goal. very interesting yes uh, but uh, but most likely again perfectionism and again but that has maybe, been maybe sorry to interrupting maybe it's a bit abstract for a musician can you i don't know let's make it like a phrase like how should the perfectionist thought be in a musician's mind well i try to look at oh, it because you have the destructive perfectionist which is the person who performs then uh, receives feedback also some positive feedbacks and then it's just waiting for this positive feedback to stop because then they want to tell the person everything that went wrong ah okay That's the destructive <laughs> perfectionist the constructive perfectionist is uh, the one who receives the feedback and wants the feedback. And then uh, knowing that there are quite a few things that could be improved on, they're very good at prioritizing and finding and, and focusing on one thing to move on. So it's not about removing perfectionism, it's about using as an inspiration and learning to prioritize uh, what to improve and then yes. wanting to and that's probably when I ask perfectionists to to uh, tell me what went well that's that's the worst question you you can give them because they, they, they want to right. talk, <laughs> talk about everything that went wrong Hmm. Uh, so I'm really kind of hard on the, the, the musicians that, no, I want the positives first, and then you are allowed to tell me one thing. So you, you have to prioritize the one thing that you want to, to improve on. And then we do exercises from there in terms of how to learn to focus on that one thing. This is very interesting. So perfectionist is not really a bad thing. It can be also destructive and constructive. It depends yes. how you understand it, how you put into practice. And mm -hmm. also to take only one negative thing to improve it, to yeah. not have all the pressure with everything. And, all. and and this is sometimes the challenge for, for the teachers because of course they want to help their students and they have just heard the performance and they have all these things that, oh, if you this, I want a bit more of that and a little less of that. And <laughs> you give the students so much and and the student wants to please. So they try to have it all in mind in their next attempt. And this is when just one mistake and then the student will think, well, <laughs> I didn't succeed. Whereas if you help the student just to focus on one thing, a lot of times, three or four of the other things just comes out. 
Yes, but I was also thinking that maybe it's not only the teacher's fault. Maybe it's also about the sensitivity that an artist it is like it, their inner or maybe their self-confidence is not very well developed. Yeah. Maybe it's also something from inner side, not from only from outside. What do you think? Well, definitely self-confidence plays a huge role. Uh, and, and again, the, the, hopefully the, 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 the biggest source for, for this, the, the musician's self-confidence is um, the, the mastery. That is, they know what they're good at. And then about their mental and physical preparation, how they have practiced. So it's not just a matter of, I know how many hours I have practiced. It's about how I have practiced my physical and mental routines during these hours I have practiced. Can you tell uh, me a bit more about these routines, please? Well, it could just be, we talked about values a little bit earlier. And if I, I ask people or the musicians, how do you want to be as a musician or as a good colleague? And then uh, they find some values. And then I ask them to, there are different ways to find values, but but then I ask them to think about their values. So if a value is, say, curiosity or kindness, okay. whatever, then I'll ask them to think about it before they start playing in, in just and in, in practicing. And what does this what does curiosity mean to to the piece you want to practice the next five ten minutes? So they kind of relate this this value to this and this quite often will create some kind of a inner state of mind okay. that they're now going towards or moving towards and then all of a sudden you will find students or musicians rather than playing about the what do i have to do to about how feeling in the in the body how do i want to feel when i play this Mm -hmm. so to be goal is an expression of inner state of mind you want to achieve. So it's not just about the what, it's yes. about how do you want to feel when you play this. Mm -hmm. And I think too many students or musicians, they, they have all these good plans about what they want to rehearse during the day. And they feel bad and terrible because it's the old culture if they don't do it. But it should be more about how do you want to feel when you play this? So rather than playing from up here, play from, from the body. Yes, and the I body understand. has so much knowledge, silent knowledge. Yeah. And you get access to the silent knowledge if you connect to your values and, and how you want to feel when you play. Yeah, somehow it's a disconnection between our heart and our mind. Yes. We try to be more or too much rational instead yep. of art, music. It's about yes. emotions at the end. Mm, very interesting. Um, also, mm, moving towards to the next fallacies that you mentioned regarding what the other people think. Is also here some good thing regarding this or it's bad at all? Or how should we manage as a musicians? Well, it depends again, of course, there will be people in our lives who from from whom we, we receive a lot of positives. And, and then all of a sudden we think, oh, I don't want to disappoint them. Uh, and and we, we can't help these thoughts coming in, but it's about learning to embrace them uh, to to and use them to trigger the the direction that we want to go with our state of mind uh, so if i all of a sudden think about afraid being afraid to disappoint someone else so they they just entered my my conscious then i have to just embrace that that person and then well you could say move back in the bus or whatever <laughs> uh, but it's actually about okay what do I have to focus on now? So you kind of, you register this, this person is entering, then you release this person, and then you kind of refocus on what's, what's the next action I have to take 
to to continue here yeah it's actually like a process yes it thinking is. analyzing but for example if a musician is on stage and while they are performing they have like irrational thought or fallacy like i will make a mistake or they are disconnecting how can they come back on their concentration how can they deal with this kind of thoughts while performing for example well first of all i ask musicians if they have experienced while practicing making mistakes but playing on beautifully and everybody has done that and then i ask them what did you do to play on beautiful after your mistakes and the worst thing is they cannot remember that they can only remember the mistake so they actually have a good experience stored in their body, but they never spend time on that experience of playing on beautifully after the mistake. But it's just to tell people, you actually have the skill in you to play on beautifully. Then secondly, uh, if, if they begin to be a little more mindful of that, kind of make mistakes. How do I move on when I practice? Sometimes I do it very well. Then they have some kind of a, 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 a something to move towards when they're on stage. And they can make up a plan for, for making mistakes. Uh, I know what to do physically. I know what to do mentally. At, at least I know what to focus on. In some instruments, you can use your breathing all depending on where you are in the music yeah. um, other times it's about focusing either an inner focus or an external focus very different from person to person um, but you have to kind of plan your action to refocus mm -hmm. and if i understand well it's somehow individuals individualized every person yes. should find their own solution or their own way how to deal with this yes but then again, it, it's about registering that you actually, uh, if, you, if you made a mistake and you have a, a tell in facial expression, like you, yeah. you, you do a little bit of, of, of screeching in your, your facial muscles, then it's about learning or finding out what do you want to do with the facial expression when you make mistakes. Okay. <laughs> because it's not enough to say, I, I don't want to squinching my my face it's about what do you want to do and and this is sometimes where people kind of go blank they, well i don't know well again maybe you should look at yourself or film yourself because sometimes you make mistakes and you just play on as like nothing happened i generally say like the the best musicians make mistakes but they also make you forget they made the mistakes because the way they played on made you forget the mistakes they made. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and and that is a practiced reaction to the mistake. Mm. And I think very few musicians are taught how to <laughs> learn how to deal with your mistakes because or to get out from your mistake. Usually, yeah. uh, we know, just play perfectly. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. But the other side around, oh, yeah, it's like yeah. a taboo topic, or I don't know why we are not taught or we are not speaking about this. And the, and the thing is, if you, if you find out that you can actually play on beautifully after mistakes, then you kind of lessen the, the the anxiety or the fear of making mistakes because you know you can move on so yeah. it is a you can actually get into kind of a positive spiral related to mistakes because they they sharpen you they they make you better yeah it's a kind it's of releasing yourself to, the goal is not to make mistakes to get better but it's, it's about <laughs> if i do make it i know how to move on mm -hmm. Super interesting.